few weeks ago now, I finally got around to testing the Ryzen 9 7900X 3D and found for gaming it's not the best, suffering from the same dual CCD scheduling issues as the fully fledged 7950X 3D. Still, it certainly wasn't terrible, but if you're mostly gaming, the 7800X 3D is the way to go. Now, although that video was a look at the entire Zen 4 X 3D lineup, with some reference made to the non 3D V cache models, loads of you expressed your disappointment in the lack of 5800 X 3D results. Here I was, foolishly thinking, we've already made a grand total of 20 videos here at the Harbour Unbox channel that discuss, benchmark, and or compare the 5800X3D to competing parts. Do we really need another video? And the answer is apparently yes. So here we are, number 21, but before we get into it, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Antec and the new Constellation series of ATX cases. The C8 comprises both ARGB and non-ARGB models with both black and white variants available. The C8 ARGB features a seamless 45 degree beveled glass edge, giving it that popular minimalist design while also providing a dual chamber for independent cooling. It also comes with a pair of 160mm Tranquil Reverse ARGB PWM fans and a single 140mm fan with a built-in fan control hub that can be synced directly with your motherboard. The top, bottom and right sides can accommodate a trio of 360mm radiators simultaneously for those who want to ensure ample cooling or just go nuts with their ARGB. Or for those of you who aren't particular fans of RGB effects, there is a non-ARGB version available as well. So for more information and to check out the rest of Antec's range, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so I should just quickly point out that 10 months ago now, I did compare the 5800X 3D and 7800X 3D head to head in 25 games at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. And frankly, that's a better comparison between these two parts than what we have today. But apparently I can no longer make CPU content without including the 5800X 3D. So here we are. And to be fair, this video does include a number of CPUs that the original head-to-head -head didn't, so perhaps there's some value in that. But for a quick recap, the 7800X 3D was 20% faster at 1080p, 12% faster at 1440p, and 4% faster at 4K when using an RTX 4090 with maxed out quality settings. So I'd expect to see similar margins here, though the focus for this test is on the more CPU limited 1080p resolution. And like I said, we have a wider range of Zen 4 processors for comparison. Now for testing, we're using the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master motherboard running the latest F22 BIOS. And for the memory, we have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 CL30. Then for the 5800X 3D, I'm using the MSI MPG X570S Carbon Max Wi-Fi running BIOS version 7D52V18, along with 32 gigabytes of DDR4-3600-CL14 memory. Then for the GPU, I'm of course using the GeForce RTX 4090 as it's the best tool for measuring the gaming performance of CPUs, and this means we'll be also testing at 1080p. If you don't understand why reviewers test this way and you'd like to learn more, we do have a video in the description which you can check out, rather than wasting time explaining it all here about the benchmarking basics. So let's get into the data. Starting with Baldur's Gate 3, the 5800X 3D is around 7% faster in this test when compared to the last time we benchmarked it, and it's difficult to say where this small bump is coming from. It's likely either a game update or a GeForce driver update. Whatever the case though, we're now seeing 141 FPS on average, making it 18% faster than the 7700X, but 22% slower than the 7800X 3D. That said, if we focus on the 1% lows, it's just 8% faster than the 7700X and 25% slower than the 7800X 3D. Still, performance overall is certainly excellent, and for those already on the AM4 platform, the 5800X 3D is once again proving why it's such an exciting part. And of course, we also have the better value 5700X 3D, but that's only 5% or 4% really slower than the 5800X 3D. So if you're interested in the 5700X 3D, well, it's basically the 5800X 3D in this video. So let's move on. Testing with Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, we saw 159 FPS on average, which is comparable performance to that of the 7900X. Then when compared to the 7700X, the average frame rate was just 5% lower, though the 1% lows were 7% stronger. 
Then we have the 7800X 3D, and it was again 22% faster. So naturally, the newer X3D part is faster, but the 5800X 3D is able to hang in there with the standard Zen 4 parts, and that's quite impressive. Moving on to Hogwarts Legacy, we find that the 5800X 3D is able to match the 7700X with just over 60 FPS on average, and that made it 28% slower than the 7800X 3D, and a massive 46% slower when comparing the 1% lows. But we know that DDR5 does help a lot in this title, and of course the larger L3 cache also plays a key role. The 5800X 3D is able to just edge out the 7700X in Star Wars Jedi Survivor, though we're talking about just a mere 4% uplift for the average frame rate. And as a result, it was 23% slower than the 7800X 3D, which produced an average frame rate of 186 FPS. Still, 143 FPS is certainly more than enough to enjoy this title using a high refresh rate display. So the 5800X 3D is still able to deliver an exceptional experience. Now, we know that ACC is a tile that loves 3D vCache, and we see that here with the 5800X 3D, which was on average 24% faster than the 7700X, and 16% faster than the 7950X. It was still 21% slower than the 7800X 3D, but again, with 177 FPS on average, it might not be as fast as the faster CPUs available today, but it still packs one hell of a punch, and for those already on the AM4 platform, as we say time and time again, the value on offer here is amazing. There is one weakness of the 5800X 3D though, well, if you can call it that, and it is the DDR4 memory. Though, admittedly, this is rarely an issue, and again, performance here is still excellent. Still, Spider-Man Remastered is a very memory-sensitive title, especially with ray tracing enabled, and here the 5800X 3D does slip well behind the standard Zen 4 parts, trailing the 7700X by a 7% margin for the average frame rate, but a 21% margin for those 1% lows. The 7800X 3D is slightly faster than the 7700X, making it 21% faster than the 5800X 3D for the average frame rate, and then a massive 39% faster for the 1% lows. Testing with a Plague Tale Requiem sees the 5800X 3D come in 14% slower than the 7700X and 22% slower than the 7800X 3D. Also, the results are a bit all over the place in this title, as there appears to be a scheduling issue with AMD's 12 core parts. But as for the 5800X 3D, 134 FPS on average makes it suitable for high refresh rate gaming, and the experience was great. Much the same can be said about Assassin's Creed Mirage. Here, the 5800X 3D matched the standard Zen 4 processors such as the 7700X. Sure, it was 16% slower than the 7800X 3D, but with 178 FPS on average, the margin here hardly matters. Watch Dogs Legion is a very CPU heavy game, but it's one where the 5800X 3D has performed well, so nothing changes here. We're looking at 157 FPS on average, which is plenty for this single player title. It's basically the same level of performance you'll see from the Ryzen 7 at 7700X. So, although it was typically 20% slower than the 7800X 3D, as I've said time and time again now, the performance overall was excellent. Like Watch Dogs Legion, Hitman 3 is an older title, but it's a very CPU demanding title or at least it can be with lesser CPUs. The 5800X 3D though powers through it with ease, driving the RTX 4090 to over 200 FPS at 1080p, and that made it 12% slower than the 7700X and 20% slower than the 7800X 3D. But again, with 211 FPS on average, the margins in this example don't really matter. Another game where the margins probably don't matter is Counter-Strike 2 where the 5800X 3D can push 480 FPS on average in our test, which is comparable performance to the 7700X and just 10% slower than the 7800X 3D. So it's possibly even overkill in this example. Then finally, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, which has been tested using the basic preset. And despite that, the 5800X 3D was again comparable to the 7700X with 327 FPS on average, making it just 7% slower than the 7800X 3D. So, across the 12 games just looked at, the 5800X 3D on average delivered the exact same performance as the 7700X, which is why we've been saying for months now, if you're going to perform a full platform upgrade or build a new PC, 
there's really no reason to purchase the 5800X3D. For a very small premium, the 7700X will get you similar performance on the latest AM5 platform, and that'll afford you an actual upgrade path. But of course, for those of you already on the AM4 platform and are looking for a quick and easy upgrade that's also very cost effective, the 5800X3D, or now the 5700X3D, are excellent options. Then, if you want the best of the best, it's obviously got to be the 7800X3D, which was 24% faster on average. So right in line with that 20% margin I found 10 months ago using a much larger sample of games. So there you have it. As we've known for some time now, the 5800X3D is still a very strong gaming CPU that's roughly equivalent to the new Ryzen 7 7700X in today's games. Whether you believe in 1080p benchmarking or not for CPUs, and you really should because GPU-bound CPU benchmarking is pretty silly, but that aside, there is no denying that the 5800X3D is roughly on par with the 7700X overall, and therefore slower than the 7800X3D. Again, no real shockers there. But what this tells us is that even at $300 US, you absolutely shouldn't buy the 5800X3D unless you're already on the AM4 platform. And if you are on the AM4 platform, you should probably just buy the 5700X3D as it is just 4% slower on average, but currently costs almost $100 US less at $245. But again, I want to be clear about this. If you're not already on the AM4 platform, even at $245 US, the 5700X 3D isn't worth buying as you're better off getting the cheaper 7600X for $210 or the 7600 for $200. And as we saw here, the 7600X is just 4% slower than the 7700X on average. So again, it will be roughly on par with the 5700X 3D, but it might age better thanks to the additional bandwidth DDR5 memory offers. And of course, again, you do have an upgrade path with the AM5 platform. And even when you factor in stuff like the cost of the motherboard and memory, I still think AM4 is dead at this point, at least for new system builders looking at X3D levels of performance. As an example, a half decent B550 motherboard currently costs $100 US, while a 32GB DDR4-3600CL16 kit costs you $80. Then on the other hand, a decent B650 board, that'll set you back $120 US, while a 32GB DDR5-6000 kit can be had for just $90. So it's about a $30 premium, and in my opinion, that makes it well worth jumping on the latest platform. As for any future CPU content that may not feature the 5800X3D, because, you know, maybe it's a head-to-head -head between two other CPUs, or the AM4 platform just isn't relevant for the content, just know that your 5800X3D is roughly equivalent to the 7700X, and around 20% slower than the 7800X3D. Whether the average is based on 12 or 40 games, that will be the case. And that is going to do it for this quick update video. If you have a 5800X3D and you appreciate me going back and giving you this video, then, well, that's great. Maybe give it a like. Uh, subscribe for more content that may or may not include the 5800X3D. We also have Floatplane Patreon for those of you who want more Hub Box goodness, access to monthly live streams, behind the, uh, behind the scenes content. What else have I got? Discord server and Q&A stuff. I think that's everything. It's everything I can remember off the top of my head. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.